Welcome back to Keep It Real Boxing. You're listening to Cypher Box and it's been announced AJ versus Gerald Miller. June 1st, Madison Square Garden, New York. WBA, WBO, IBF and IBO titles on the line. Right. Okay. Listen, this isn't going to be one of those normal videos that I've done in the past where I'm talking about the politics of the heavyweight division, this whole Wada, AJ, Fury stuff, Dillian White, all that sort of stuff. If, if, you've, if you've jumped on the video expecting to hear that kind of stuff, it's not going to be get that kind of video today, right? Um, I've done a whole load of videos on it. You know, I've got a whole playlist dedicated to it. Uh, I've given my thoughts on it. Um, and I'm tired of repeating myself, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm tired of repeating myself, constantly providing facts and stats and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. It is what it is. This isn't the fight we wanted to see, of course, but it's the fight we're going to get by the looks of things. All right, so let's talk about Jarrell Miller. Jarrell Miller, his rankings, let's start with there. He's ranked number two by the WBA. He's ranked number three by the WBO. He's not ranked by the IBF. Uh, and he's not ranked by the WBC. Now, he probably hasn't ranked by the WBC because he is not enrolled in the uh, VADA or the WBC clean boxing program, which is run by VADA, right? Of course, this will be pay-per-view in the UK on Sky Sports Box Office, and it will be shown on The Zone in America. Um, in The Zone will be a subscription-based purchase. So there's no contract with The Zone. So you literally can pay for that one month subscription of $10 or whatever it is um, and then unsubscribe to them and cancel your subscription once you've watched the AJ fight. So it'll be interesting to see how how well this sells uh, over in the US, to be honest with you. You know it's going to sell here in the UK, to be honest with you. Well, I don't know, actually. It will probably sell here in the UK, but how well it sells in the UK, that's another question altogether. Now, I've seen a couple of interviews with Eddie Hearn. I've read a few articles as well where Eddie Hearn believes that Anthony Joshua will sell out Madison Square Gardens. Um, you know, I'm guessing he's banking on the UK fan base to show up and show their support for Anthony Joshua in his US debut in America, in New York, Madison Square Gardens. Leading back to the question I just pondered on about a second ago, which was, will this fight sell? Yeah, that's the question. All right. Now, let's look at it this way. Now, I heard that AJ's first fight on zone when they launched zone out in the US against Alexander Povetkin, which was here at Wembley, um, only did somewhere between, I'm hearing different numbers, but somewhere between the region of 15,000 and 20,000 views. Yeah. Dylan White recently just came out saying it literally only did 17,000 or something like that. That's why he didn't put his fight with Chizora on the zone. He went with Showtime because terrestrial to uh, TV was the way to go uh, to get more viewership out in America. Now, if those numbers are true, the zone numbers that AJ pulled with Povetkin, makes you wonder, how is he going to do with someone like Jaro Miller? Jaro Jar Miller is relatively unknown to the casual boxing fan. Right, especially out in America. Remember, this is you're selling this product to the US fan base. You're selling this fight to the US fan base, not to the UK fan base. Yeah, the UK fans will probably pay the pay per view here in the England, here in the UK, right? But are the American fans going to give up their ten dollars to watch this fight? That's the question you have to ask. You know, they actually. Anthony Joshua himself and Eddie Hearn, to be honest with you, has openly said that AJ needs to grow his profile out in the US. Yeah, he, he, he needs to grow his profile out there. He's not big enough. He's not a big enough name in the US at the moment. So does this fight with Jaron Miller get him that exposure he needs and he needs in the US? That's the question. I, I'm not sure, yeah, I don't think it does, yeah, because a casual boxing fan in the US are going to look and say, I don't know who Anthony Joshua is, and even more, Jared Miller's a, a, an American fighter, but I don't even know who he is, so what am I paying for here, do you understand what I'm trying to say, I don't know how well this fight would do, 
I honestly don't. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see, of course, because look, I can't sit here predicting, yeah, it's, it's going to do bad. And, you know, I can't say that. But going on what the Povetkin numbers were on the zone between Anthony Joshua and Povetkin would suggest that. And the fact that, sorry, Eddie Hearn has himself said that, you, you know, AJ hasn't got a big enough US profile. You know, it may not be a good result. Could be wrong. Don't get me wrong. I could be wrong. He could turn up doing great numbers. But I'm just going on what's already been, what's already happened and what Eddie Hearn, Anthony Joshua's own promoter is saying. So we'll have to wait and see, I suppose, with that one. The other point I want to talk about is Eddie Hearn saying that he feels that Madison Square Garden will sell out. I think he's banking on a lot of UK fans traveling for this fight, right? Now, it's a fight against Jaron Miller. It's, I'm not saying that UK fans won't, there won't be UK fans out there. But how many will really go out there to sell out Madison Square Gardens? Because like I just said, I just said to you, AJ still needs to grow his profile in the US. Jarrell Miller, with the US casual boxing fan, is relatively unknown. Yeah, You're targeting the US fan base here. That's why you're going to America. You're not trying to bring your UK fan base with you and take over Madison Square Garden. That doesn't make sense from a business point of view. If that was to happen, say 15,000 Brits came and travelled. And I think Madison Square Garden has a capacity of, what, 20,000? So say 15,000 Brits come over and, and buy up, you know, tickets to this fight. And then the other 5,000 or the other two or 3,000 are bought up by US boxing fans. From a business point of view, that's a failure. Because it means you haven't tapped into the US market. Yeah? The US market has not bought in to your product. Yeah, so this whole idea of him banking on the fact that UK fans will travel to come and see and buy enough tickets so he, he could say, hey, look, we sold 16,000 tickets or 17,000 tickets, you know, only 3,000 or 4,000 shy of the capacity of Madison Square Garden. To me, that would be, from a business point of view, that would be a failure. Because you're targeting, the whole point of going out to the US is to target the US fan base to sell your product which is Anthony Joshua, to the US market and to grow his profile within the US market. If majority of the fans at the stadium that night who bought the tickets are UK fans, then do you know what I mean? You failed because you haven't tapped into the US market well enough. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, all right. We've seen things in the past with uh, like so Ricky Hatton. I think Ricky Hatton, when he fought Floyd Mayweather, how many um, uh, UK fans travelled for that? Was it about 20,000? I think it was that 20,000 travelled for it and about ten to 15,000 bought tickets or 10,000 bought tickets or something like that for the fight. You know, the rest of them just turned up to support him at the weigh-ins and stuff like that, right? But again, that was against Floyd Mayweather, yeah? Who was pound for pound the best fighter at the time. So, and the same with Manny Pacquiao when he brought uh, all that massive fan base uh, with him for the Pacquiao fight. There was a, it was worthwhile for, a, a, for the UK boxing fans to travel out there because the magnitude of the fights. You know, this isn't that type of fight. That's my point. You know, I've, I've read a lot of comments on social media, uh, which I'll go through later on. I'm not going to talk about that now. I'll go through the social media comments later on. And these are from Brits as well. These are British UK boxing AJ fans who are who are saying these things, which makes me think like, mm, how many people are actually going to travel for this fight? Don't get me wrong. It, it, they might turn up. But again, at the same time, like I said, like I said to you a minute ago, you're not aiming for the UK market. You're trying to build a UK, uh, sorry, a US fan base for Anthony Joshua. And you need US fans at the fight. Majority of them, you know, at least selling up 50% of the tickets. And buying uh, a monthly subscription from Design to watch the fight. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You know, if, if, you, if you're banking on just all UK fans flying over and helping you sell, sell out the stadium or the arena, then that's a failure. 
Because that's like just having a fight back home in the UK, isn't it? When you think about it from a business point of view. And no, before any of you say it, this isn't me hating or wishing AJ uh, or Eddie Hearn, you know, bad luck or sitting around hoping that they fail, etc. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like I said, this is keep it real boxing. Yeah. One, when I talk about my videos, I base it on facts and stuff like that and the information that's put out there. When it comes into me, I analyze that information and I give you my straight up opinion, my straight up perspective on the situation, on how I read it. Right? That's why I call the channel Keep It Real, Bo Keep it Real Boxing, because I give you my straight up honest opinion once I've analyzed the situation. Okay? Don't get me wrong, like I said, I could be wrong here. This is just my thoughts, my opinions. Doesn't mean I'm right. Yeah, these are just my thoughts and my opinions. Okay, so let's look at ticket prices. Now, I'm on Instagram on my laptop at the moment, and I'm looking at, I'm on Matchroom's Instagram site, and I'm just going to read out to you what the ticket prices are going to look like, right? So the cheapest ticket price is going to, they put up, is $106. Yeah, then it goes up to $156, dollars 206 dollars $306, $406, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $506, $
right so he carries a lot of weight now a lot of people say oh he's a fatty he's a fatty but actually when you think about it miller's for a heavyweight who's that big of that size he's not in in too bad of shape he has actually pretty good endurance when you think about it when, for his fights and this brings me to my next point sparring partners for anthony joshua as you know fighters when they depending on who they're fighting they will try and get sparring partners who can best imitate their 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 next opponent right finding sparring partners that are going to be able to imitate jared miller's style and his his size his physique his build his weight is going to be a little bit difficult yeah a lot of people gonna i've seen i've already seen on social media right there's some one guy out there said just go and hire butterbean as your sparring partner aj and that'll be enough right some out there doing the whole oh hire a uber taxi driver and these are uk fans who are who are poking this making these jokes yeah but if you're a real boxing fan yeah you will know that yeah, okay jared miller is a big boy yeah all right he's a bit f flabby in places but he's still a well-built machine he's still a strong powerful force yeah and he's quite he's for a guy his size he's pretty athletic in the ring yeah i've seen him bounce around a little bit you know so it, it, it's going to be difficult to find sparring partners for jared miller and um, for anthony joshua to imitate jared miller you know so it's gonna be interesting to see who he gets as sparring partners to be honest with you okay because you know what i mean he needs to spar against guys who are a lot heavier than him who are going to be trying to put their use their weight and press their weight on him yeah lean on him try to tire him out he needs to learn how, he needs to train to fight against that sort of style if that makes sense so let's talk about miller's style yeah, his style of fighting. Yeah, he's the type of fighter. He holds a high guard. Yeah, walks his opponent down. Yeah, I watched the other day his fight against Gerald Washington. Okay, and he holds this high guard and he walks his opponents down. He's a come forward pressure type of fighter, constantly applying pressure to his opponent. Yeah, cutting off the ring. Yeah, forcing his, his opponent to move back. Yeah. All right, to fight on the back foot and move around the ring, constantly getting them to move. All right. Um, the other thing I've noticed with him as well, when he holds that high guard, he is still open to punches. His defensive his defensive capabilities aren't that great in, in some instances. So when he holds that high guard and he comes forward to you, he's open to the punch down the middle between the guard, the jab, the straight right, and he's also open to under the elbows. And his opponent landing body shots. I saw Gerald Washington do that a lot against him. He's the kind of opponent who's banking on wearing his opponent down. Getting his opponents to throw punches, tire themselves out, getting them to move around the ring, closing down the ring, applying pressure, you know, leaning on them, using his body weight, that massive body weight of his. Um, you know, he comes in 300 pound plus and wear his opponents down, sap the energy out of them fatigue them you know and then go to work on them that's what that's the kind of fighter he is yeah he's also a little bit awkward to be honest with you as well if i'm honest uh in the sense that he he looks to spoil when he gets you on the inside so when he's mid to close range um he looks to kind of spoil your work and disrupt your rhythm yeah so he'll do a lot of things with like with his hands and he'll he'll get on the inside he'll grapple with you a little bit you know just to make it awkward for you and to frustrate you yeah which again is a way of sapping your opponent's energy yeah and draining your opponent's energy yeah to work in your favor for me i think jared miller is more most effective from mid to close range that's what he looks to do he looks to get on get in on the inside mid to close range and then start teeing off and letting off shots he doesn't really throw a lot of jabs he's not really the, that kind of fighter uh, he, that's what he holds that high guard um the one thing he also does is you know he, he's very good at slipping low yeah he slips low to try and avoid punches slip very low to try and slip punches and then get in on the inside okay 
And then he works the body pretty well as well, I have to admit. He'll work, once he gets on the inside, he starts throwing those body shots, hard body shots, and then he throws a, a, an uppercut that will go with it, or a couple of uppercuts, and then throw a straight right. He'll throw combinations from inside. Yeah, he's not the sort of fighter who's going to really work from the outside, in my opinion. Yeah. Another thing you're going to have to watch out for would be when he gets you on the rope and when he puts you in the corners he's gonna and he gets those opportunities and he does get in on the inside he's gonna lean he's gonna put that body weight on you again he's gonna use that body weight to drain you yeah i remember i saw against gerald washington when i watched that fight a couple of days ago yeah there was an incident in the middle of the ring where you know the referee before the referee broke a clinch he kind of leant over and put his whole body weight over the top of uh, Washington's head like literally and pushed him down and the referee's like break 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 but when Washington got back up he was like breathing heavy so these are sort of tactics he's going to use against Anthony Joshua yeah and when it comes to AJ I gave some real constructive criticism in my review of his performance against Alexander Povetkin I thought that fight went on for way too long um, and that fight should have been over in three or four rounds yeah, because I believed he got the strategy wrong. He gave away his height and his reach advantage to Alexander Povetkin. Now, it felt like he was trying something out, trying some things out that he was trying in training, you know, this, the, the jab to the body. But when you're fighting a smaller guy, you don't give away your height and reach. You want to be punching down at um, and keeping it at range, especially when you've got the reach and the height advantage, right? Miller is the kind of fighter who wants to fight mid to close range. He wants to get in on the inside and do damage. Yeah. So for Anthony Joshua, for me, it's key that he uses that jab. Now, for me, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say I don't rate Anthony Joshua's jab. Yeah. I don't think his jab was great, particularly great against. He doesn't extend it correctly and stuff like that. Um, I feel he needs to work on that. Yeah, because that's going to be a key tool for him against Miller. He wants to keep it at range. He wants to let off combinations. Yeah, mix it up to head body, but do it from range. Yeah. And he, when he gets that opportunity to land that uppercut of his, which is his signature punch, he needs to get, he needs to let that loose. All right. But he's going to have to rely on a lot of movement because Jarrell Miller is going to keep coming. Now, the question is, can Jarrell Miller take Anthony Joshua's power? Because if he can take Anthony Joshua's power, yeah, then it's, it could end up being a long night for AJ. All right. If he can't, then it could end up being a very short night for Anthony Joshua and he gets him out of there three or four rounds. We'll, we won't know till fight night because this is the real first real test for Gerald Miller in terms of a, a real step up in the opponent. Let's be honest. OK, so for me, AJ, he's going to be fighting on the back foot a lot. Yeah. And a lot of movement. And the thing with Anthony Joshua, I feel Anthony Joshua is a little bit too robotic in his style. Whether he can do that or not, I don't know. I mean, AJ is the kind of fighter who fights in straight lines. Yeah, whether he can keep that kind of movement, moving around the ring, going for, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds, providing if Miller can take the power of his punch um, and it ends up being a long fight, you know, whether he can do that for that long period is another question altogether. You know, because like I said, he fights in straight lines. He's not someone who usually moves around the ring like that. So it could be very difficult for him to try and do that. And not only that, you have to look at the stamina question as well. He's a big heavyweight. AJ usually around about six, seven, eight rounds, he starts feeling the pace a little bit, as most heavyweights will do uh, do anyway. But one thing I've noticed about Miller, Miller keeps coming. I think Miller, in my opinion, I think people are underestimating Miller's endurance rate. Uh, and he'll just keep coming. So whether AJ can, you know, keep him off for a long period of time that's another question that we'll have to wait and see get answered on fight night in my opinion but another thing AJ needs to take advantage of is definitely punching underneath that high guard underneath Miller's elbows to land body shots but not only that to get around uh, Miller's guard as well so what I noticed against Gerald Washington was that Gerald Washington had a bit of success where he when he was throwing punches he was looping them and hooking them around Miller's high guard and landing and landing those headshots with hooks and lefts so AJ needs to look at those things as well and try and capitalize on those situations bottom line is for Anthony Joshua is that I feel he needs to keep out of range and use a movement 
keep popping out that jab he needs to throw that jab out he didn't do that enough against Povetkin in my opinion yeah he needs to pop that jab out and work off that jab and keep it out of range if he does that all night long and we end up learning that actually Miller can take AJ's power you know if it will what it will do at least will make Miller's style of fighting which is like getting on the inside and fighting from mid to close range it will make that style of Miller's ineffective so even if it went 12 rounds, which I'm not predicting it will, but even if it went 12 rounds, for those 12 rounds, majority of those 12 rounds, by doing that, AJ, AJ makes Gerald Miller's style ineffective by keeping at range, if that makes sense. So my prediction for this fight, I think Anthony Joshua within 10 rounds. And a lot of people are going to go, what? No, he'll get him out there in three or four rounds or five rounds. Yeah, look, he may, he may. I'm not saying he can't do that. The reason I'm saying Anthony Joshua within 10 rounds is because I'm I'm wanting to I'm waiting to see whether Jaron Miller can take AJ's power or not. Yeah, and if he can take his power, then I think the fight goes longer. But if he can't take AJ's power, then the fight it could be end up end up being a short night for Anthony Joshua. Don't get me wrong. But because I don't know the answer to that question just yet, I'm going to go with AJ within 10 rounds. Okay, I'm going to finish off the video with a little bit around uh, fans and their comments that they're leaving on social media. All right now on the YouTube ch on Edge Anthony Joshua's YouTube channel, where he made the announcement, it's like a four-minute-long video, right? Um, I was reading the comment section, and a lot of people, obviously, majority all AJ fans, saying, "Yeah, good luck, do your thing, AJ, etc., etc." And they're all wishing him the best of luck and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of people were like, a lot of people. I d this is where I wonder how many fans are going to travel for this fight because a lot of them were saying things like oh you know it's not the fight we wanted it's not a great fight but hey what can you do and stuff like that you know and wishing him all the best right which makes me think there's not going to be there's not a lot of excitement around this fight let's be honest okay and just looking at the social media I'm on Instagram I'm still on Matchroom's uh, page uh, and I'm bringing up this uh, where it gives you the uh, fight details the comment section and you know I'm gonna read some of the comments out to you so one of them was and these are UK fans because I've just checked their um, I was checking their profiles earlier on so one guy said neither are really known in the States even Mr. Bob Aram said so in America everyone knows Fury is King so I'm guessing that's a Fury fan to be honest with you so I don't know how much I can take that one on board uh what else was there there was another guy here where is it he said yep def uh, defo not a pay-per-view uh fight still an aj fan but nope gonna keep me 20 pound never um never not paid for an aj fight before so he's saying he's not gonna pay for it but you know what a lot of people who say that jump on and say oh i'm not gonna pay for it and then come fight night they pay for it um Da, 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 da. what else is there no offense against miller but joshua only using this to get big bigger in america miller isn't good and isn't good hasn't fought a good standard if he wanted to hit america let him call out lewis ortiz at least he gave wilder a good fight okay so that was another let me have a go on this guy's profile yeah that's another uk boxing fan there saying that da, da, da. let's go down what else have we got here? All right, I think this is American. Oh, no, it, it's not. It's a British boxing fan. Wouldn't pay £10 to watch this fight. Big big fan of Joshua, but this is a joke. Over in four rounds, Miller is... Miller, an undersized sumo. Okay, he's saying, calling him a sumo wrestler. Du, du, du. Du, 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 du still rinsing the fans i see matchroom and hearn are a disgrace okay some people are really not happy so look there's quite a few people who are not happy there was a few people in there obviously who were responding and saying i don't know they were trying to defend aj a little bit but there wasn't much detail to their comments but look some people aren't happy with it and still wishing aj well there's a lot of that on his YouTube channel on the video that he, where, where he makes the announcement, etc. Uh, and then there's some people out there, UK fan based um, boxing fans who aren't happy with the fight at all. And, you know, are stating they're not going to tune in for it. 
uh, uh, well obviously look like I said a lot of people talk a lot of stuff on show, social media but at the end of the day they end up paying for the pay-per-view so that we'll find out once the fight's done the numbers for the fight and then we'll know whether you know the fight was a, a success or not okay that's all I've got for you guys on this one uh, leave me your comments uh, let me know your thoughts what do you think about AJ versus Gerald Miller in New York Madison Square Garden he's making his US debut uh, remember the rules of the comment section guys yeah no foul language yeah no racist terminology I do have blocked words in play so if you l use that kind of language or that kind of terminology yeah your comment will not be published it will drop into my spam box and when I review it, I'll just delete it. And depending on how bad the comment is, I will just block you from my channel. Simple as that. I've got no problem with people disagreeing with my opinion. As long as you articulate yourself intelligently, I've got no beef. Yeah? But if you're going to start being childish and leaving foul language and being racist, leaving racist comments, I'm not going to accept it. You know? And leaving racist comments, that would definitely get you blocked from my channel. All right. So please respect the comment section um, and articulate yourself intelligently and maturely. Yeah. All right. As always, guys, like, share and subscribe. Until next time, this is Scythebox reminding you to keep it real.